Hey folks. For the last few weeks, I've been looking for a cabinet for the top of my dresser to try and keep things a little bit more tidy. Uh, the problem is my organizational strategy is best described as first available surface. Um, I was looking for something that might be a combination of open spaces for frequently needed things and some drawers for things that I'd use a little bit less. After quite a bit of bumbling around on Amazon and Pinterest, I came across this beauty. It's weather beaten as heck, but the overall design really works for me. Places for papers, recent mail, variety of drawer sizes, and a card catalog style hardware that is my kryptonite. So how do we go from an image like this to an actual design we can use on the CNC? The key is proportions. Images like this appeal to us because of the proportional nature of the design. If we can map the relationship between all the little drawers and cubbies, we can scale it up and down to fit the things we need while keeping the attractiveness of the basic design. So how do we do that? Looking at this from the front, it's simply a collection of rectangles, and that's something we can easily map in Carbide Create. Let's start by taking our image and making it the background for our design. I've started with a 24 by 24 inch document, so I've got plenty of room. I've also set the guide to be about a quarter of an inch square just to make things easier to map to standard American sizes. Click the set background icon, load image, and find the file and click OK. Set the scale and opacity to fit your needs and click done. The first rectangle we're going to draw is going to be the outer dimension of the case. Then we want to map all of the openings in the case, all of the drawer fronts and things like this. We can tweak things as we go along until we have a pretty close approximation of our structure. With a classic design like this, you can see that many of the pieces share the same dimensions. The center pieces are all the same height and should be centered in the case. The upper and lower sections on the left have the same dimensions, with the upper piece split slightly to accommodate the slot and the drawer. The two long drawers should be the exact same size, as are the four smaller drawers in those sections. We can use this to tweak things and make sure we get a pretty close approximation of what we need. Once all those pieces are scaled and positioned correctly, we can group the entire piece and scale it up or down to fit our needs. In my case, I know that I want to fit standard US 8.5 by 11 paper. If I expand the image to where that center section matches that measurement, I should have what I need to get started. So now that we have our finished outline, many of you are probably asking how the CNC is going to cut this. And the shorter answer is, it's not. We're still going to be using this, though, to gather the design for our pieces and map out what we actually need to cut on CNC. So what I've done here is I've created this layout and I know some things about my piece already. This particular section here needs to hold standard paper. So it needs to fit eight and a half by 11 paper. I've made this 11 and a half, so I know it'll fit. And that means I know that my overall piece has to be at least eight and a half inches deep. I went ahead and made it nine just so that I'd have some extra room. So I know that each one of my boards is going to be nine inches deep. All right. So we already know that. Now we need to figure out where all of those pieces are going to fit together. So the first thing I have to do is figure out how thick my wood is. In this case, I decided to go with a half inch plywood. Three quarter was a little bit too beefy and quarter was going to be too flimsy. So. I went ahead and measured it because we all know plywood is full of flies and it wound up being 0.463 inches. So once I have the thickness for the wood, I can start mapping out these other pieces and figuring out exactly what I need to cut. First off are these outside pieces. This is the area I really want to concentrate on first. And by laying out these edges, what I wind up with is something like this. You'll notice I've got notches where the other boards are going to fit and then I have this small joinery section up here. Now I did that by creating a set of you know standalone notches right 
and these look like this and they're designed to be the same dimensions as my boards so I just grab those put them in there and subtract them out so that I get my notches right and then I subtract out this smaller one which is simply half the dimensions of my board out of this corner here and this corner here and I get my joinery piece this is called a rabbit and that's the way this whole outer piece is going to fit together now you can see there are notches here for each one of the boards as they go across so I can start designing the rest of those I usually try and design the outside first and then design from the center out so the next one I create are my middle boards and those look like this right these will have my slots for my pieces coming across here these are a uh, quarter inch so they're a slightly different notch that I used here and I decided to put three of them instead of two and that's just personal preference for me um, this particular board here is going to be interesting to cut you'll notice because it has a notch on this side and it has a notch on this side so we'll have to flip this one at some point when we go to cut it so after that you know you can see the way these are put together I'll go ahead and show you the top which looks like this let's have all my pieces there and then the bottom which goes like this all right now this one is also going to be one of those ones where you have notches in both sides so we'll have to flip this piece and I'll show you how that's done on the machine but once we have all of these what this gives us is I now know that this particular board pull up the scale here is going to be 18 and a half wide and it's going to have a notch right there and I can use that to design the pieces that I'm now going to cut let me show you how that's done so I've opened up a new file and I've pasted in the top piece from my design file copied and pasted in so now I already know from my old measurements that we were talking about that I need a nine inch piece and it needs to be as wide as this right so it's going to be nine inches high and 18 and a half all right so now I've got these two and I'm going to align them together let's align the tops and I'll line them like that all right that looks better so now I know this is the board I'm actually going to be cutting and these are where my notches are so my first notch was going to be the same width as my board so that one needs to be 4.63 yeah 0.463 And I'm going to make that one about nine and a half. Okay. So now I can got that. And I can drag it down to where it's going to align with my notch. You want to see it snap node to node. Right? And you'll notice it hangs over here. And I'm going to get it to hang over both sides. And the reason being, when I cut this out, I'm going to be doing a pocket. And I don't want those little rounded pieces at the end here so this will be a pocket that I cut with my quarter inch bit and I'm gonna make these also the same way so let's go ahead and just copy this now to start with I'm gonna go ahead and make this 232 all right and I'm going to use this node, grab this node, and lock it to this one. All right, that tells me I'm aligned correctly. Now, the one thing I want to do, I'm going to move this up like I did with the other one. But then I'm going to take it, and I want to make this a little bigger, right? Because I don't want to, I want to be able to cut all of this with my quarter inch bit. And my quarter inch won't cut a pocket here, and I needed to cut a pocket there. So I'll grab my transform, my scale tool, and I'm just gonna bring that out to where it's a little more than a quarter of an inch. That's really all it needs to be. That's about a half, that's fine. 
so done but that makes sure that I'm still aligned with where I need to be aligned right there uh, then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one two three two Grab the node, lock it to this node. Cool. Move it up and widen it. So now all of these can be cut with a quarter inch bit. And I don't need this piece right now. I can move it up and out of the way. So this is what my actual board is going to look like. Now, there's one other thing that I need to do here because I'm going to put a back on this. So I need to give myself enough room to put a back piece on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another small dado right here. So let's make ourselves that one. That 19 inches by I believe my stuff is 0.19 that's gonna be my eighth inch plywood that I've got so I'm gonna be able to lock my node there right there so now I'm locked to my node Move this over to where it's kind of centered okay and that's the notch that'll fit my my plywood now again I want to be able to cut this all with a quarter inch bit so I'm going to widen this out. All right, that's plenty. Okay, so let's go in and, and set our tool paths here so I can show you what this looks like when it's done. I'm going to grab all these guys and deselect this one. All of those are going to be pockets. They are going to be with a quarter inch. And they're going to be half our board thickness. So two, three, two. All right. Cool. So like that. And then we're going to cut outside this one. Contour, stock bottom. Four, six, three. We're going to go outside right. All right, and if we look at our simulation, we'll see that we've got our pockets, our shallow pockets here, and the, for the back. So those would be for our joinery on this top and bottom, and the back, and this will be for one of our shells. And we're going to go through, and we're going to do the same thing for each one. Now for this particular one, I can go ahead and just move this out of the way because I don't really need it. At least I think I can move it out of the way. Okay, good. All right, then I'm going to grab this, group it, copy, paste, and I'm going to mirror it because remember we're going to do a top and bottom, and those will mirror that, make sure that the back is correct on both sides. So that's our top and bottom piece figured out. And we just build the other pieces the exact same way. Each one of them where our notches are, we put one of these dados. And where our joinery is, we do a half version of that over here. Now the top and bottom and the two sides are the only places we need to worry about this back. But other than that, the same principle applies. this is done we want to go ahead and do the same thing with our sides again we'll take these two side pieces and then we're going to use them to create our side boards now one thing to remember with these side boards is these will have the back on them so you'll need to mirror them so that the back lines up if you don't lay this out correctly one of your pieces will end up being upside down and you don't want that 
Once you have your top and sides cut, let's go ahead and glue them up, making sure that everything is square and well clamped together. There are two important things here. First, make sure that the notch for the back is facing the same way on all of our boards. The second less obvious thing to watch for is the rabbit joints in the corners. These joints can go together two different ways, with the top above the sides or with the top flush to the top of the sides. You want to match your design document or it will throw all your other measurements off. This is another reason I like to assemble this outer case first. That way I can confirm my design measurements using the actual case. Once the sides are put together, I can go ahead and measure, cut, and attach the back. I want to do this so that I can confirm the depth of the rest of my shelves. Because the back is inset into the piece, those inner shelves are going to be slightly narrower than the outer edges of the case. The rest of your pieces will be designed and cut the same way. Copy your edge piece to a new file. Size the width of the board to match the depth of your case. The length of the board is the same as your edge piece, and the pockets can be positioned using the notch on your edge pieces. For the pieces that need pockets on both sides, you'll need to save a separate G-code file for the front and the back. I would also recommend setting up a corner jig like this one to make sure that things are aligned and square. Use your design file to make visually sure you flip the piece the correct way. Once all of your pieces are cut, the whole thing should slide together like a jigsaw puzzle. Again, keep an image of your design file handy to make sure you have things turned the right way around. If you find that any pieces are off, just adjust and recut them. It's common to make a few of these errors in your first few designs. Don't stress. 95% of woodworking is learning to fix mistakes. With your case finished, it's just a matter of cutting drawers, drawer fronts, and some knobs. I'm glossing over most of this in the interest of time, but the main thing I want you to take away from this video is the ability to map proportions in a design or an image and translate that to CNC. If you can practice and learn this one skill, you'll find your CNC journey is much, much easier and more rewarding. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you do want me to go into greater detail on the drawers and such. Until next time, be kind to yourself and remember to pet the cat.